society won't survive. Like many Gen Xers, me being a Xennial, I didn't graduate from college at 22. You know, I struggled in high school. I dealt with bullying. I had my ups and downs. My family life was not very good. My father was very, very difficult. And by five years old, none of you feel, this is the thing, like Gen Xers listen to my story and they don't feel sorry for me because, you know, they'll just share their story with me like, damn, you had it that good? It's, 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 but it's kind of the thing, like, you know, by five years old, I was on my own, you know, using the stove and making food for myself and, and my younger siblings, younger sibling. And, you know, someone said, some Gen Xer popped up in the comment when I said that before. And he goes, ah, you know, at five, I wasn't allowed to use the stove. I was home alone, but I wasn't allowed to use the stove. So you really had it good. You know, this is just, this is just how Gen X grew up. When I was growing up, you know, back in the eighties, my, my arm got cut open. My, 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 yeah, I was like eight. Was it, was I eight? So back in the eighties or early nineties, like maybe it was either like 1991 or, or in the late eighties, my arm got cut open, a terrible wound. You know, it it happened at home. There was a rusty nail and just, it ended up getting cut open by a rusty nail. And, uh, you know, you know how my mother dealt with it? Oh, she, you know, she took us to the, took me to the hospital immediately and got me stitches and, you know, and, and they took care really good. Now that didn't happen. That didn't happen. You know how they dealt with it? She basically looked at it, took some ointment, you know, like clean the blood off. Cause there was a lot of blood, clean the blood off. Right. And, you know, all the meats out there, put some ointment on it as I'm screaming, grabbed the bandage, bandage, wrapped it up, and sent me to bed. And, of course, I had school in the morning. And that was it. I've heard stories from other Gen Xers where, you know, they would get cuts and basically terrible cuts, and they would just rub some dirt on it. So I share that with you just to kind of illustrate the difference between a Gen X childhood and Gen Z that were coddled. Gen Z, for many of you that don't know, are now on their, they're in their, they're in their villain arc. They're definitely, they're definitely in their villain arc. And boy, and it's like, like, we're just, we're just getting started, you know? If you, you know, many of you know about this, like I talked about in one video, I, an earlier video about an influencer named Natalie Reynolds, who basically went to like a lake and there was a woman there and she basically told the woman, hey, if you jump on in, she was with her filming with her crew, she's a streamer, and she told her if she jumps in, she'll give her 20 bucks. And I, to my understanding, she told the woman that she was a lifeguard. The woman said that she couldn't swim and she's like, yeah, but I'm a lifeguard. So the woman jumps into the lake and then, and then she starts saying that, you know, she all she can do is float. She can't actually swim, and she starts to panic. And what does Natalie and her crew do? They basically run away, leave her in the lake, and hop in their cars and drive off. Gen Z. And the fire department had to come and rescue the woman from the lake. And I talked about that in another video. And many of you also know about this whole quiet quitting thing. You know, what to know about quiet quitting vacations, the new work trend, infuriating bosses. Now, you have to understand there's a difference between there's a difference between playing uh, between working, you know, having a remote job where you are contracted to, you know, where you can work anywhere in the world. You know, for example, you're a consultant or whatever, but, you know, you are not you're not you're not being allowed to work at home. You know, you are contracted to work from anywhere in the world. Right. There's a lot of the passport bros do that passport kings. But then there are people who are allowed to work from home. But when you are allowed to work from home, you're simply just that you're just you're allowed to work from home. So you're expected to be at home and to be working from home. OK. Gen Z 
what these people are doing is forget about quiet quitting. They've devised a new way to uh, play hooky, and they're doing quiet vacationing. So these, these people are increasingly taking time off under the guise of working remotely, a hack facilitated by, facilitated by the uptick in work-from-home arrangements following the events of 2020. And according to a recent poll, you know, 37% of these people are actually doing this. They're listing Gen Zers also as millennials, but this is specifically this is this is specifically being done by Gen Z. So they try to confuse them. No, this is Gen Z. All right. Meanwhile, 80% of US employees don't take all of their personal time. So I mean, with Gen Z and millennial employees constitu constituating the lion's share. Yeah, I mean, they're, so they're trying to list, they basically list Gen Z as all their millennials, but this is specifically Gen Z. This is a Gen Z trend. Now, when I talk about this behavior, because it's stealing, they're basically taking vacations, going on vacation when they should be at the office, work when they should be at home working, and then, you know, trying to do like bits and pieces of work from the swimming pool. Now, guys, if you have a nine to five job and you're supposed to be working nine to five, you are stealing. You are not actually working nine to five. These people are traveling. So when they're doing, when they're supposed to be working, they're on a plane flying to another country. Okay. This is this is ridiculous, ridiculous. You know, you have specific tools that you have when to, that you're able to use when you're working from home. They don't have any of that. Imagine talking to clients, and this is it's ridiculous. All right. And obviously they're not focused on getting their jobs done. If they're swimming, hanging out, relaxing, going out to eat, they're only doing a small fraction of the usual work that they would be doing in an office. Many of you cannot see how dishonest this is. So it's like, OK, now, you know, I personally believe that remote work is a good thing, but these people are not being responsible. They're stealing time. OK, so, you know. It, it, in this inflation, I think remote work makes a lot of sense. I think it's I think it's an incredible concept, but you cannot. You have to be honest. You have to get the work done. And what ends up happening is you end up with you end up with these you end up with a situation where instead of getting something done over the course of you know a day, it's going to now take two days, maybe three days, because you're just fooling around. It's 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 true. You're working much less. So you're basically getting paid to just chill. All right. Guys, like uh, guys, this is this total BS. There are there are pictures of these Gen Zers like in swimming pools, just swimming, relaxing, and then go and then like going over to the laptop to look at the laptop. And of course, Gen Z is pissed off. They don't like me. You know, I got a comment from one of these good for nothings on my video where it's, I made where Gen Z is swearing revenge against the boomers. Milk Tea Alliance says, your videos are 10 minutes straight of victim blaming, dude. It's the government's fault. Why don't you talk about, why don't you talk about the cabal and wake up? So basically, Gen Z is swearing revenge against the boomers. And they're just, and they're saying the boomers stole their futures. So they're just going to steal it back from them. These people are bad. These are some real bad apples. The boomers stole their futures, so they're going to steal it back from them. And you guys know how I feel regarding the boomers, but they're justifying theft. Like this, all of this, like work theft, quiet quitting, quiet, you know, quiet vacationing that I just explained. This is the bull crap that they're doing. Stealing from their companies, stealing from stealing from society. Stealing from stores, stealing packages off porches. Oh, it's it's a it's a victimless crime. Okay, we're just trying to balance the status quo. Billionaires shouldn't exist. We need to we need to wipe out the ultra wealthy and redistribute that wealth. These are the people they became ultra wealthy because they created value and 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 value and uh, and jobs, allowing a lot of people. To, to, to have these opportunities, the same jobs that, that Gen Z, for example, 
Gen Z is furious. They want to make $50 an hour to deliver pizza, right? They want to make 50 an hour working at work doing DoorDash. But at the same time, they hate the billionaires who made DoorDash and made and created the opportunity so that they would have that opportunity to do menial labor and make an income doing this. Like they're not, they're not used. Something is off about them. They, you know, they're furious about Amazon warehouses, right? But here's the thing, bro. No one is forcing you to work in an Amazon warehouse. And it's because of the billionaires why you have the option and ability to work at an Amazon warehouse or to deliver packages for Amazon. No one is forcing you to do this and call it a job. Okay, if you don't like it, you can go and work for UPS. UPS is like paying over a hundred thousand dollars a year. See, this is where things become very, very tricky because once you start mentioning things like that, like, okay, well, dude, if you don't like working, if you don't like delivering packages for Amazon and making twenty dollars an hour, hey, bro, just go and deliver for UPS, and they'll they'll cut you off. They'll start to curse at you and become belligerent because y'all can't pass a drug test, man. You can't pass a drug test. You know UPS is going to test you for weed, dude. And a lot of y'all, you know you won't even make it through the front door. You know UPS is going to hire you, a lot of y'all. UPS is very good about the people that they hire. They are, like, somehow UPS has, has a keen sense of, like, they can they know how to spot decent people. They really do. Like, UPS has some of the best drivers in the world. And it's obvious that they are able to, they have some kind of system that they're using to determine if a person is going to be honest and is going and is going to work hard. And the people who work for UPS absolutely love the company. And they're very, they're, they're legendary for how good they are to their employees. And yet, so if you, if, if, if Gen Z wants to go and deliver packages and make a, make a really high salary, why don't you go work for UPS? Oh, that's right. Because you can't work for UPS. Because a lot of y'all can't handle that. A lot of y'all would never get hired. Okay? Because you can't pass the screening. That's why. Okay? You couldn't pass the screening. Can't pass the P-test. Gen Z, they're a bunch of jokers. They're a bunch of jokers, man. I'm sick and tired of this bad generation. This bad group of people. Yes, I said it. They're a bad group of people. Guys, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, maybe consider checking out the Men Walking Away channel. I release daily videos on the Men Walking Away channel, and there's a link to it in the description of the video. So if you want more Angry Guy content, check out Men Walking Away. Again, it's linked in the description. Go check it out. Subscribe. Enjoy the content. What do you guys think regarding this? Society won't survive. It won't survive. I think I get it. The inflation, the economy is very rough. People are struggling, but that's no reason to steal. And Gen Z, they're just leading the charge. They're just leading the charge of social and economic decline. Let me know what you guys think regarding all of this, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away. And cheers.